Okay, so we're going to look at hype, um, tumult hype today, and um, just have a brief run through of, of the of the work area and um, little bits and pieces about what it does. So this is the tool we'll be using to make our site. So if you're going to make a desktop site or a, a mobile site or a prototype application, this is a great tool to use. Um, and what it allows you to do is to make <clears throat> web content without having to look at code. So you can work visually um, on this area, the stage, using a timeline. And you can create um, sites that not only have static content, so images and text and pages, but crucially also incorporate animation and, and bits and pieces like that. So it allows you to do kind of rich internet sites, really. Whereas a tool like Dreamweaver or, or Muse, and if you use WordPress and those sorts of tools, they're fairly limited. They're sort of static site generators. Um, and this is a little bit more, um, a bit more varied. OK, so essentially how it works is we have a page or a scene here that will be our visible um, site and we're able to then put content on this stage and then down here you'll see a timeline and we can move that content over time so these are frames um, and time and we can stack in here layers of content that we can animate and that can be anything it can be images graphics um, it, you can bring in a sound file and have a button that clicks it to play um, you can do small animations that resize it's it's fairly um, it's fairly broad, so it's, it's a good tool for that. Um, and then we can link together various, try not to think of them as pages, but scenes together in a kind of sequence that either play in sequence, as we have them in here in this panel, or we can kind of navigate to them via links and buttons, and they will play when we tell them to um, using various um, commands or functions that we set in the application. Um, so it's just like a film would be a, se a series of scenes that we can either play or navigate to. Okay, So we have the stage and the timeline and the scenes area. Okay. Um, up here we've got various um, buttons that allow us to introduce elements. These are like objects in Illustrator. And so we can put in, for instance, a button element and then we can edit it and change it so that it has normal hover and press dates and change the color and the text. And we can insert videos and images, um, audio, um, embed other HTML objects, or we can put in graphics and a bit like the primitives we were using in Illustrator. And we can start to put these in and populate our, our site. So we can get in a, a kind of rich range of stuff, put it on the stage, and down here you can see as we put each element in, we have a new layer. And then what we're going to do is kind of animate those over time if we want to. So we can we can make them move and, and come in and either fade up or scale up or whatever. Um, symbols we'll get onto later, but this is a, a really powerful way of putting animation into our scene. So it's essentially embedding a, a timeline within a timeline, but more on that later. Here are our group and ungroup commands. Very much like we had in Illustrator. And then we can stack and move in the stack the elements using these two buttons. We can zoom in and out, and then we can decide which platforms we want to preview in. So we can preview in Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and we can add to these, of course. Okay. Then on the right hand side here we have palettes similar to what we'd have in other Adobe um, programs and these allow you to do specific things with stuff um, either for the document or stuff that's on the stage here okay in the scene so the first one is the document setup so this is really the overall HTML um, document we don't have to know anything about this at the moment but essentially we can set what kind of site it's going to be and dictate um, what HTML and title it will have that will show up. Um, we've got some options for mobile, some advanced options here, and then we can show browser compatibility warnings down here. So that's really about the HTML document. 
we have specifics of the scene, so this will be this area. Um, we can choose some preset sizes, so this depends on what your output is going to be and, and what, what it is you're making. You'll see there's lots of options in there. There's some default sizes for iPads and mobile devices, web platforms, etc. etc. Going pretty self explanatory. We can also decide that we want something specific or bespoke, and we can set our own sizes here. If we want to have a site that kind of resizes on different platforms, we can dictate that it's a responsive layout. We can have various timelines. We can change specifics of the, of the scene, like background color in here. And we can have certain kind of key functions that will load or play when the site loads. So on screen load, we can add an action. So when the scene loads, do something, play a sound or whatever. And then there are versions of that. So when the scene unloads, if you press a key, particular swiping, etc. So this is really as the site loads, do something, or as it unloads, do something. <coughs> and that can be automatic or on a key press or swipe. Here we have metrics. So this is really for um, content. Don't really look in here too much. Um, so really for how things will behave when we change them on the stage. This we'll use fairly, fairly regularly. So this is an element inspector. And these objects or elements are things that we kind of put on on the stage. And then as we click each one, you'll see we have options to change each. So this will change as we click each one. And then we can change specifics about that using these sets of menus. So here I can change the color for this one to red. Um, I can give it some curved, curved angles. So here I'm just curving things. I can change the visibility and give it a drop shadow. <coughs> Etc. Etc. So it's pretty pretty self-explanatory, um, and we can do all sorts of things. So we've got some filters, effects, and blurs. This is for inserting and dealing with typography. Fairly straightforward. Um, like most um, type functions in software, change the point size, do with typefaces, bold, etc. How you want to display it. This is how we kind of make actions or get the functions of our um, application working. So this is fairly significant. Um, as I said, you don't have to know anything about code, but essentially what we're doing when we're making buttons, for instance, we can click a button and then in actions we can decide what and how that button will behave when it's pressed. So here you can see actions. What do I want to do when I hover over it? Well, I want it to be a pointer or maybe a crosshair, or I want um, something to happen that's different, so we're going to leave it as default as a pointer. And then if you're making a desktop site, you want it to do something when you're clicking it, so on mouse click, click the plus button. What action do you want to perform? So what is it that you need to do? And here we can say, OK, play a sound, and then we can add a sound sample or file. <coughs> and then once that's clicked when the site is running, that sound will play. And that's really all you have to do um, to get to get things working and, and for the um, things in the in the scene to be interactive. <coughs> and then here we just have a physics inspector which allows us to um, dictate how things respond to activity on the screen. So the physics of objects, how they bounce or how slowly they are dragged due to friction, etc., etc. So those are it's, these little panels are inspectors for elements within the page. Some of them are specific, so relate to actual things that we're dealing with. Whereas others are for the background, the HTML setup, etc., etc. Um, but pretty 
Cristo.